everybody. Welcome to Saturday Stories. This is our December featured illustrator, Charles G. Esperanza. And this is his latest amazing book, Boogie Boogie, y'all. And we're going to hear all about this book, how Charles does his amazing, vibrant, fun. Actually, I would say the art jumps off the page, which is very key to the story as well. Um, and we'll hear more about how he does his amazing artwork in just a moment. I just want to welcome everybody. Uh, if you're new to Saturday Stories, this is a monthly program that we've been running since 2018. I used to present that live at Society of Illustrators in Manhattan on East 63rd Street. And um, of course, during the pandemic, we switched to a, a virtual version of the Saturday Stories program, which incidentally led to us visiting our illustrators in their studios, seeing an even more rich behind the scenes um, uh, presentation of how they do their work. And you can join us from wherever you are, from the comfort of your home with your art materials and just uh, follow along. We also record um, this workshop, so later if you want to revisit it and do it all over again or let other friends know about it, you can see it again on our YouTube channel, Society of Illustrators YouTube channel. And behind the scenes, uh, we have Lindsay, who's at the Society of Illustrators. She's going to add things into the chat. Um, so we'll have like emails. You can uh, definitely see more about Charles on his website. Uh, you can go to the Society of Illustrators website and see all our events and programming that's going on right now. Uh, one of our big, big shows, the biggest show actually of our uh, year is a original art show. This exhibit will be on until the end of the year. It ran through November and it's running through December. Charles's original artwork is in this show. He was one of the selected illustrators. We get almost like around 800 participants all um, submitting their work, which is juried by professional illustrators, editors, art directors, people who are professional in the business, who look through all of the art that's submitted and they choose the very best. And we have about 240 illustrations in this vibrant, amazing show where you get to see all the different styles. We've got everything from Charles style, which is an oil paint, to collage, to digital art, uh, watercolors, pastels, colored pencils, graphite. You can think of any art materials if you ever get the chance to go to an art store. It's like a candy store. <laughs> you just see so many different art materials. It's very inspiring. And you'll see all of those materials put to use in all the different art works that are in our show this year. Um, the show was founded by Dillis Evans, who was an art director and artist um, agent. This is in uh, 1980, so quite some time ago, and the Society of Illustrators has been running the um, exhibit for the past 41 years. This is our 41st year of the show. So if you do get a chance to go visit it in person, just double check our protocols on the website as far as, you know, entry. Um, but it's over two floors in our main gallery, and it's running until I think it's the 29th of December will be the last day for the show. And um, we also have a beautiful um, show up in our dining room, which is the um, Champions of Flight. Now you've all heard of the book Eloise, I'm sure kids. Well, Hilary Knight's father was also an illustrator, Clayton Knight, and he and William, he um, what's he's, he slip, were both aviating, uh, aviation illustrators. And the show is magnificent. If you don't get a chance to see the show, there's a beautiful book and you can get the book actually in our um, museum bookstore. It's called Champions of Flight. Um, so we also would love to thank the Bruce J. Heim Foundation, who are our sponsors for our Saturday Stories program. They generously donate um, a gift for us to be able to present this to you for free. And uh, they uh, firmly believe that books play a vital role in the development of children's imagination and dreams, as we do at the Society of Illustrators. We are very big supporters of picture book illustrators and authors. Um, so Charles is also an author. He's author illustrator and very exciting. When Charles was a student at the um, Fashion Institute in New York, he actually was an intern at the Society of Illustrators. And uh, we're so delighted to have you here this morning, Charles. And if you read um, the biography of Charles, he's actually got that also in rhyme. So he's very lyrical, he's got a musical way of uh, doing his words. And he's 
the second child in a family of six siblings and grew up in the South Bronx, surrounded by vibrant art, music, festivals, and things that were going on on the street. There would be street musicians, and he was super inspired in, in the parks and walking around the streets. And this book takes you on a tour. You would feel like you're walking in his neighborhood in the Bronx, because you'll see all the vibrant artwork. It's super inspiring. And it's about three children who really notice what's around them and um, they bring it to life. So I fully recommend getting the book. Um, you can get it in libraries, you can get it at local bookstores. And um, I'm hoping that Charles will be able to visit a school or a bookstore near you next year. And maybe you'll get to meet him in person, particularly if you're in the area of New York where he's living. Um, so he's also the author illustrator of another wonderful book um, that's called Blue Yellow, red or red yellow blue and a dash of white <laughs> and um i i thoroughly uh, hope that you've got all of your art materials ready because we are going to have a lot of fun doing this workshop this morning so i'd like to introduce you to charles this morning over to you charles welcome hello everyone thank you so much for skipping your favorite cartoons to be with me today this is going to be way more exciting i pr i promise and yes, thank you, Claire, for that amazing introduction. My name is C.G. Esperanza, AKA Charles George Esperanza, AKA Shalaranza. And I am the author illustrator of this book, Boogie Boogie Y'all. And it is about graffiti art and my hometown of the Bronx in New York City. So without further ado, I would love to share my book with you all. If, if that sounds good, you can clap at home. I can hear the applause, I'm sure. <laughs> oh yes, do put your questions in the chat for Charles and um, do um, send in your artwork. You can um, send it to the email that Lindsay will put in the chat. Awesome. So right now we're going to read the audio book and the actual book of Boogie Boogie Y'all. Enjoy everyone. Boogie boogie y'all bang a drum don't run the art on the wall makes the block mad fun boogie boogie y'all city boogied all day busy 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 till one kid stopped to say whoa 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 look at the yard on the wall whoa 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 look at the yard on the wall busy late in a hurry busy 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 no one cared at all about the yard on the wall busy late in a hurry busy 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 no one cared at all about the yard on the wall boogie boogie y'all a train boogie down the track everyone was in a hurry one can stop to clap bravo bravo look at the yard on the train bravo bravo look at the yard on the train yuck gross horrible awful yuck awful everybody complain about the yard on the train yuck gross horrible awful yuck awful everyone else complain about the yard on the train Boogie boogie y'all bang a drum don't run the art on the wall makes the block mad fun boogie boogie y'all the kids boogied in the park jump skip hop when dogs begin to bark wow 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 look at the yard in the park wow 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 look at the yard in the park jump skip slide hip to the hop no one cared at all about the yard in the park jump skip slide hip to the hop no one cared at all about the yard in the park <laughs> yeah. <laughs> block party boogied in the sun. Bob down all around the block was having fun. Fuck on Mango Daddy, you're the man where I see treats while the break through boogie to a bumba yo beat. The whole block was bubbling and having a blast. Just then it happened with a bang and a flash. Boom, Ella Kazuma art boogied off the wall. Boom, Ella Kazuma art boogied off the wall. Boogie, boogie, y'all. Everyone boogied away except two kids, a dog, and cans of paint spray. Clickety clack, click. They shook the cans of spray. Psst, 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 you won't believe the art they made. Boogie, boogie, y'all. Bang a drum, don't run. The art on the walls makes the block mad fun. Boogie, boogie, y'all. Bang a drum, don't run. The art on the wall makes the block mad fun. The block began to boogie till the block became the art or the art became the block. I forget that part. Boogie, boogie, y'all. We boogie down. I had a ball and that's the Tell of how the art boogie off the wall, boogie boogie y'all city boogie all day. Boogie boogie y'all city boogie all day. 
Boogie boogie y'all, bang a drum, don't run. The art on the wall makes the block man fun. Boogie boogie y'all, city boogie doll. Day boogie boogie y'all, city boogie doll. Day boogie boogie y'all, bang a drum, don't run. The art on the wall makes the block man fun. Boogie boogie y'all, city boogie doll. Day boogie boogie y'all, city boogie doll. Day boogie boogie y'all, bang a drum, don't run. The art on the wall makes the block man fun. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you everyone for, for listening to that audio book and for sharing that with me today. <laughs> oh, I, hope, I hope everybody got a chance to get up and dance a little bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> also watching the book. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was Boogie Boogie Y'all by me, C.G. Esperanza. And also on the audio book was my nephew, Ian. And Ian is only seven years old, but he is a great rapper as well. And he helped me out with that audio book. So if you heard a little kid on the audio book too, that was my nephew, Ian. And Ian is also one of the main characters in the book. He is this kid, the one with the missing teeth. Ah, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he he's, he's also, uh, in in the music video that we are that we made for it that we'll be showing soon. he's a great dancer an amazing dancer oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah often artists put people they know in their books <laughs> yeah, yeah i think it, it, it just uh when you when you write books and you make characters you want to base them on people you actually know and he's one of the funniest funnest kids i know so i had to base oh. one of my characters on him wow that's awesome. And so I, I, I would love to. So in the book, you see the art is kind of, kind of is much smaller, still a, a pretty big book, but this is the size of the actual book. And this is actually the piece that's in the Society of Illustrators right now. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> Mary Archie. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the actual original paintings and you see how much bigger they are mm -hmm. what do you think like one uh, 120 percent bigger what do you i mean you know like it's uh what do they say it goes up by let's see 100%, that's I'm, I'm really i'm not the best at math oh, much bigger <laughs> much bigger sorry yeah now i see it completely yeah 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 so i like to i like to work big because uh i did have a dream that one day i might be in the society of illustrators so I said, you know what? If I make a painting for these book for this book, it needs to be really big so it looks nice and big on the wall at the Society of Illustrators. And there it is, everybody. Oh gosh, I hope you get to see it. <laughs> and he, yeah, so I I used oil paints on all of these paintings. Here's my nephew Ian again, and. I used a little bit of acrylic paint for the splashy parts because I needed the splashy parts to dry really fast. So I used acrylic mm -hmm. paint there, but on the face, I used oil paints because I, I feel like rendering with oil paints is much easier. I, if you don't know what the word render means, it just means to work very closely and to fix very, very, to make it look perfect. Mm -hmm. And here is the painting for the dog who noticed the art in the park. Mm -hmm. So the, the line for this part went, boogie, boogie, y'all the, the kids boogied in the park. Jump, skip, hop, when dog began to bark. Bow, wow, wow, look at the art in the park. So <laughs> I got to paint sneakers with this part. <laughs> yeah. Which I love painting sneakers. I have a, a new book coming out about sneakers. So you'll be seeing a oh, lot yeah. of sneaker paintings from me. I'll we'll have to talk about that a bit more later. <laughs> and here is another painting of one of the last scenes in the book. And the scene of this book, of this uh, painting is the block began to boogie till the block became the art or the art became the block. I forget that part. And that kind of symbolizes to me that 
the art and the book are all one. They're mm -hmm. all one entity, they're all one being. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so those are the original paintings. Now, uh, I can jump to uh, a couple slides if we, uh, if that sounds good to everyone. <laughs> yeah, that? yeah, yes. Awesome. So let me set that up right now. One moment, one moment. I hope everyone's eating their favorite cereal right now and feel free to, uh, let us know what your favorite cereal is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where you where you are, what part of the country are you in or the world? Oh yes, definitely. Okay, here we go. So, before I get into this, actually. I want to share a little bit of my history with all of you to let you know how I got into illustration, how I became an illustrator. It all started with that. <laughs> so this is one of my first ever drawings that I did wow. in school. And my teacher, Ms. DeBellis, because I remember all of my teachers' names, she said, wow, this is really cool. You should become an artist one day. And I said, hmm, you know, I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And so I started drawing a lot of anime when I was a little kid, because I loved anime. Mm -hmm. And I made my own, I started making my own books of anime, Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z because I realized that if I stapled the sides of the paper, it automatically became a book. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those look great. And so when I, when I was in high school, I was in the literary magazine and I started making the covers to the literary magazine. And that also inspired me to start writing. Who, who else here loves to write poetry? Claire, do you like, like to write? I do, I do. I love poetry and I love reading it. Um, yeah, that's, I, that's why I really enjoyed reading. I actually read this out loud to my, you know, to myself. Because <laughs> oh, really? it inspired me to read it out loud because the way you wrote it. <laughs> awesome. I always love hearing the different ways people read it too. Yeah. And so this is one of my first ever self-portraits that I did in high school. And this is when I didn't have, I didn't have hair back then. Uh, and yeah, a lot of people were impressed that I could actually draw so realistically. Oh, yes, it's beautiful. Is that in oil as well? It's in charcoal. Charcoal. Wow. Yeah. The charcoal is super, super messy. If anyone's mm -hmm. ever used it, it's a really messy medium. Mm -hmm. So I did more work in charcoal. And then I started learning to paint digitally. And this is, I was still trying to find my style. I was like, how, what kind of, paintings do I want to do? Do I want to do digital paintings, charcoal paintings? I don't know. So I tried everything. And that's a good thing to do to make to make sure you're choosing the right thing. This is the the naked cowboy in, in Times Square who uh, <laughs> performs in 46th yeah. Street. So this is me in college and I'm just thinking, what are the possibilities? What else could I do? You know? <laughs> And so I started making my own costumes. These are other ways that I express my creativity. Comet. Oh. <laughs> and then I, I, I started looking at artists like JC Leindecker and I was just like, wow, this is the most amazing art. I actually saw my first JC, one of my first JC Leindeckers at the Society of Illustrators. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy to see, to see it because it inspired me and showed me an awesome way to oil paint that looks a lot like the anime kind of that I that I love. And so that's a detail <laughs> shot. So mm -hmm. as you can see here, I really love JC Leindecker. Mm -hmm. I still love him to this day. And then Ashley Wood was another artist that I really enjoyed. Windsor McKay, such mm -hmm. whimsical backgrounds and settings and characters. Uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, mm -hmm. I loved his just his art style. And he was a young black artist that inspired me to let me know that, you know, 
it's possible for a young black artist to, you know, be an amazing famous artist. Norman Rockwell, who is one of the most amazing artists you will find. This is his Ruby Bridges painting. And then my professor, Eric Velasquez, is the one who introduced me to picture books and showed me how amazing they could be. And this is the book that really inspired me called The Rain Stomper, which I actually saw the originals at the Society of Illustrators when he was chosen to uh, be in the show in about 2007. Yeah, yeah, great book. And so, yeah, there was a lot of rejection and failure, but you know, we kept it moving. I started the illustration club at FIT. And this is the first time where I was just like, I wanna get more people excited about illustration. And we made our own uh, Christmas cards and we would sell them in front of the school. And we actually started having an art show and we got our favorite professors to, uh, cur to curate the show, pick the art that would get into the show. And uh, Melanie Ream, who is a friend of the Society of Illustrators was also with us there. And as you can see, the students really were excited about it. <laughs> Excellent. The, the, the show was a, was a success. Mm -hmm. You see, lots of people showed up. This was a very proud night for us. And lots of people from the Society of Illustrators showed up as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so graduated from FIT and I started working on my first book, Red, Yellow, Blue, and the, 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 the look of it changed so much. So this is when I started, it was in gouache. And then I said, you know what, let me make it digital. And then I was like, oh, it doesn't work too much digitally. So then I did it with pencil and digital. And I said closer, but not quite there. This is a, another book that I worked on with Eric Velasquez. You can see me on the cover. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then the first book that I illustrated, I didn't write it, but I illustrated it was about Jackie Robinson, written by an amazing author, Tanya Grossinger. First book event ever. As you can huh. see, the kids are really excited about it. <laughs> and then finally, the final look for my book, Red, Yellow, Blue, I finally tapped into the kind of style that I wanted to do. And I finally made the book that I wanted to make, Red, Yellow, Blue, and a Dash of White, too. And I, my mom bought me this awesome jacket for my first school event that I would do with the book. And the kids loved the book a lot. As you can see, this was uh, pre-pandemic time, so no one wore masks. <laughs> Great picture. Love that. Yeah, and I just started seeing people taking pictures with the book online and it was a really proud moment for me. Really exciting to go to all these different schools and read the book. And uh, the Huffington Post named it one of uh, the best picture books of 2015, which I was super proud about. I started painting murals in schools as, a, as another thing that I you know dreamed of doing. And I started teaching at a senior home as well. And this is all their portraits they're doing of me because I love art so much that I want other people to you know, do art. So I thought that that would be a great thing to start teaching art. Oh, yeah. You can, another thing that I did, I'm working on a casita at the Bronx Children's Museum, which opens next year. So you get to see a casita that I designed. Here's the model for it. Oh. I had 3D printed and painted. <laughs> so colorful, love that. Thank you. And so then, yeah, we get to my book now, Boogie Boogie Y'all, that just came out this summer. And as you can see, my style changed a little bit, but not too different. And here are some pages from that. And then finally, the last book that I just put out, Soul Food Sunday, which just came out last month, actually. And you can find that book in stores now. And it's about um, a kid who works with the, her, uh, his mom to make soul food Sunday dinner for the whole family. And my mom is the main character. She's the grandma right there. And my nephew, Nolan, another family member is the little boy in the book. 
So oh. yeah, that, give the family all the roles. <laughs> yes, yeah, love that. Thank you, thank you. So I, so we can jump into the uh, drawing session or should I have one more slide about my process? What do you think, Claire? What should we? Um, yeah, no, let's have a look at your process and then we'll, we'll jump in, yeah. Awesome, okay. So, I'm gonna show you the process behind my oil painting technique. And this is a self portrait that I did. As you can see, I'm wearing the same exact clothes, same hat and same jacket as in this drawing. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to do a self portrait. The first thing that I do is I map out everything in pencil and then ink it with marker. So the drawing is already there. I don't have to think about, you know, whether this is the right size or if anything is sized proportionately because the drawing is already there on the board. And if you have to use a projector sometimes, feel free to use a projector. And then I, I put down a neutral color over everything. So you can see that's kind of like a brownish, orangish yellow. And then here you can see, I start with a couple highlights here and there. I put down a darker brown on my face to match my skin tone. And then you can see I work in even more darks and highlights. And so remember, things don't have to look perfect while you're working on, while it's a work in progress. Just take your time and make sure you're looking at your reference and matching it as well as you can. And so you can see here, I have my face almost done, but if you can take a look, my, my cheek looks a little chubbier than it does in person. So that's something I probably had to work on a little bit. And so for the hat, I just put down, the hat has so many colors as you can see here. So I just put down a dark base color behind the hat. And then I painted every single bead on the hat very intricately because I wanted it to look perfect. Mm. And remember, this is all oil paint, so this took forever to dry. I was gonna ask you how long this took. Yeah, forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still think dry. it took a week, but uh -huh. it, it definitely wasn't dry when I finished. <laughs> and you can see I, I made my cheek a lot, a lot uh, thinner. <laughs> uh -huh. And then added Ooh. my blue jacket in there. Charles, your eye for color is so good. Oh, thank you so much. Amazing thank match. Oh, color adds such vibrancy and life to everything. So I definitely appreciate that. It's cool that you can almost touch that jacket. It looks so real. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, so I actually uh, took this reference photo at the Botanical Garden. So I have lots of flowers and roses in the background. Mm -hmm. And then this is the finish. And I took it to the botanical garden, uh, you know, back to where I took the original reference shot. As you can see there, there's like some real pieces of stems stuck to the painting because it was still wet when I took it to the botanical garden. Oh. And then my, my friend who was the original photographer took a picture of me with the painting. Yeah, that's such a great portrait shot. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So, yeah. Thank you so much. That's inspiring everybody, you know. I hope everyone is inspired. I think that's the best thing an artist can do for the world is inspire you to create yeah. and make your own art because I, I would love to see all the art that all of you create. Yes, we would, yes. So right yeah. now I'm going to ask everyone to get out your markers, get out your style sheet, whatever you need. And we are going to start working on our graffiti letters. Does that sound good to everyone? Give me, give me a round of applause at home if you think so. Yeah. I can hear that, I can hear it spiritually. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm gonna give everyone a second 
to get all of their materials ready. Because I know as an artist, that can take a second. So you can see here on the style sheet, we have one style of graffiti. There are so many different styles of graffiti that you can do. There's computer style, there's wild style, there's bubble style. This is more of a bubble style graffiti. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's a good way to start off. And so. So fun. And you invented this typeface. I, I wouldn't say I invented it, but I was very, I was very inspired when I created it by all of the art that I see okay. on the street. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very fun bubble writing, isn't it? I just, it's very cool. Definitely. Yeah. I think. Bu bubble writing you can see your name from across the room when your letters are big and bright and bubbly mm -hmm. so that's why graffiti artists use this style so you can see it from across the train across the street you can always notice the graffiti there so just real quick um we're still seeing the powerpoint we don't see the style sheet i don't know if that's intentional oh okay let me stop sharing for a second and then reshare. Is that better? Ah, uh, yes. Now yes. Style sheet. Yes, that's a good point. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah. So this is the style sheet, everyone, that I was talking about that you had no idea. <laughs> Um, Sorry, I was so busy listening to you, I didn't realize. Yeah, no, that's much easier to see. Yes, perfect. Yeah, and so we have all of the bubble letters here. And please, if you want to make your letters a different color, please feel free to use any color you would like. I'm very much inspired to see everyone's own style of doing things. We have visitors um, from Canada and from Ohio. So yeah, it's fun to see where people are coming in from. There's, well, I, I was in uh, Montreal and there are lots, there's a lot of amazing street art mm -hmm. there. Okay, so I'm assuming everyone is set up by now. And so I am going to do my initials for, so when you are making your, your bubble letter name, your graffiti name, I think the best thing to do just to start off is your initials. If you have a middle name, even better, because then you can have three letters. So my name is CG Esperanza short for Charles George Esperanza. So I'm going to choose C-G-E. So the color I'm gonna choose is, for my outline first, is purple. Sometimes it's good to choose a darker outline And I know all of you there in TV land are using your markers and crayons and color pencils. I'm using digital, digital paint just so it's a little easier for everyone to see. Sorry to interrupt again. Should we be seeing you drawing now or should we just be seeing the style sheet? I just wanna make sure. Oh, I'm about to start drawing. <laughs> okay, great, awesome. Thank you. Oh, no problem, thank you. So, I'm going to start with C. And so, I drew that on the wrong layer. So I'm gonna, so you guys get to see me do it again. <laughs> 
And I hope that everyone is finding their, their own letters perfectly. Yeah. yeah, you could create your own bubble writing too, yeah. So here is the C and I'm looking closely at the style sheet while I do it. So there goes my C outline. And then my next letter is G. And so a fun thing that graffiti artists do is they usually have the letters overlapping each other. So I'm gonna start the G right like it's behind the C. There we go, we have our G outline. And then the next letter is E. So like I did with the other one, kind of gonna make it look like it's behind the G. Make it look like it's overlapping, the G is overlapping the E. And if you don't wanna do it that way, cause it's your, your first time doing graffiti bubble letters, that's totally fine. You have the style sheet now, so you can do it whenever you want. So there we go. We have C, G, E, which today is my bubble letter graffiti name. You can also call it your tag. Your tag, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, so once you have your outline there, then you want to add your fill-in. So that can be any color you want. So I'll give you all a second to decide which color you want for your fill-in. Is fill in a term that a graffiti artist would use? Yes, it is. I want to, yeah, I wanted to address that. How, you know, it's like when you're doing something on walls, you're doing it pretty large usually. And there's the word tag and then fill in. Yes, yeah, so that's interesting. These are all terms that relate to graffiti artists. Definitely. So the, the fun thing about Boogie Boogie Y'all is I, I am just an admirer of, of graffiti art. I've never, I'd never done graffiti art before. So this book gave me an opportunity to learn about graffiti art. So I'm just like a kid too, just learning and exploring with all of you. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna get a little, a little complex. You don't have to uh, do the same thing as me, but I'm going to, make my bubble letters a little bit like the book, as you can see here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill it in with two different colors, one on the top and one on the bottom. Yeah, I was admiring that on the cover, yeah. And highlights, yeah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, and the highlight in the middle. I don't think I'll do the highlight, but I am gonna do the two different colors. Mm -hmm. So the first color I'm gonna use is one of my favorite, favorite colors, and that's hot pink. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to fill the top in with hot pink. And if you kind of go over your line, that's totally fine because we have one more step after we do the fill-in.
Oh, one of our participants, Charles, was wondering, um, is Pokemon one of your um, uh, inspirations for anime? Yes, I love Pokemon. Um, I, I was one of the first in my school ever to catch 150 Pokemon, including you and me too. Yeah. I, it made me very popular in school. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Tina, for that great question. And also somebody emailed in a question and they would love to know which independent bookstores are carrying your books and do you have a particular recommendation? I know a lot of them all over will be carrying them. I actually picked up this um, in Charleston, South Carolina at the local library. They had lots of copies at the library and lots of bookstores are carrying them. But if you have any recommendations yourself, um, Charles, like some favorite book, independent bookstores in the Bronx, perhaps you give them a shout out. Oh, yes, definitely. So I would love to give a shout out to The Bronx's Reading. The Bronx's Reading is an amazing uh, book organization in the Bronx that holds a, a, the Bronx Book Festival every year. And they right now are raising money to open a children's bookstore in the Bronx, the first ever children's bookstore in the Bronx. So if you go to the Bronx's reading on all of your social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, bronxsreading.com, I believe is the website, and you can order the book from there. And also, if you want to donate to their cause to make an amazing children's bookstore in the Bronx where you can find amazing Bronx artists like myself uh, doing children's books, you can... Uh, donate to them as well. That's wonderful. And actually, Lindsay behind the scenes has just typed in that email for the bronxesreading.com. So you can find it right there. Awesome. And then some other ones are the Lit Bar, which is one of the only uh, bookstores that we have in the Bronx. And that one carries lots of amazing Bronx authors and illustrators as well. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you can shop there if you're in New York or order from them if you're not. And lastly, I'll there's there's a couple more, but I'm gonna cut it short. Bronx Bound Books is another is a is a mobile bookstore in the Bronx, and they have an amazing uh, van that they drive around to different places and they hold events and sell books right there on the sidewalk. So you I, can. I wish there were more of those. That's like a great, yeah, yeah. great. Great to distribute books, love that. Definitely, sometimes they come to the Botanical Garden, which is, as you can see, I have so many plants. The Botanical Garden is one of my favorite places of all time. So I love being able to buy a book while I'm at the Botanical Garden. Yes, and go sit in the garden and look at it. Um, <laughs> I, okay, I'm gonna let you do a bit more of the art, but I do have a pretty pressing question. <laughs> in, cool. It's my own question. <laughs> It's about your hat. You know it's going to be about your hat. I want to know all about your hat. <laughs> so I'll, I'll answer that question right now. Well, actually, first, so I did my first uh, fill-in on the top of my name, CGE. And so I'm going to pick a different color for the bottom part of the fill-in. And that color is going to be mustard yellow. And so I'm going to start filling the bottom part with mustard yellow. Mm -hmm. And so to answer your question about my hat, one day I was, I was in, uh, I was just having a nice walk and I saw this art store, this uh, art seller that was also a beauty salon. Mm -hmm. it was an African beauty salon and art seller. And they did amazing braids and twists there. And they also mm -hmm. sold some like, ancient looking, amazing African art. And I was just amazed by all of the awesome stuff I was seeing, so much whimsical art. But then I saw this hat and I was like, that is- that Amazing. <laughs> and it spoke to me, it said, this is, it spoke to me, it said, I will, I will uh, activate your, super creative energies if you put me on. So of course I had to put it on my head. And once I did, I was I, so many different creative ideas came to me and I just had to have the hat. 
I couldn't afford it at the time. So three, two years later, I came back with enough money to buy it. <laughs> And here it goes. Right and it was here. still waiting for you. It's so your hat. <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you to um, uh, people who, who purchased my books, who helped me afford this hat, because yeah. you definitely helped me so much. And this hat is actually um, from Cameroon. And mm -hmm. it is a ceremonial hat that um, people would wear to the most fancy ceremonies that they had. And I wear it to all of my read-alongs and all of my school events. And I'm wearing it now because this is a very important event to me. Oh, you know what? And it's such a special hat because all that beadwork, is it, is it quite heavy? You know, I, I've, I've gotten used to, used to it, but when I first put it on, it was a lot heavier, but yeah. now it's almost like a feather. Yeah. Oh, wow. I just love that. And I love the story behind it. it it's, it's like a little magical crown, artist crown for you. <laughs> yeah, it's it. And, you know, I, I think that an artist should always be an extension of their art. Your whatever you wear should match what you create because, you know, it's an expression of yourself. So I like to look like the characters in my books. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes, I love it love it so this right here is my fill-in with both colors cge and so the last step i would like everyone to do is pick a dark color and go over your outline one more time because some of you might have colored over your outline a little bit so you can just go over that with a dark color. And if you wanna make it a little thicker, that would be great. Just so it really pops. And I can't wait to see all of the art that all of you are creating. I will be able to see it, I'm sure. Yes, do send that into my email address that will be in the um, chat, or you can send it to Charles. Um, you can also, if you have a way to do it on Instagram, you can share it on Instagram. If your parent has an Instagram account. And I said that that was the final step, but it wasn't. There's one more step after you add the thick, dark outline. And that is adding a bright color outline. And I'm going to pick neon green. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is really fun. You know, I'm doing it myself. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see yours. <laughs> it's a very fun, relaxed, and I love words too. You know, it's fun to do words and create art with words. Definitely. So as a, as a child, Charles, uh, you were interested in writing and music and um, is that something that you were good at at school? So when I was when I was a little kid, I did not like to read. You could not get me to read a book whatsoever. So <laughs> picture books, you could look at pictures. <laughs> yeah, so uh, picture books definitely were some of my favorites, but definitely didn't like to read. But um, so now as an adult, I love to read. And mm -hmm. I anytime you see me, I'm probably reading a book. But I still remember how difficult it was for me as a kid to get into a book because I love video games and I love visual things. I love movies and I love music. So mm -hmm. whenever I, I write a children's book, whenever I do a book, I think about uh, the first child version of myself. And I said, what 
what could I do in this book to make it interesting for little Charles to, to read? So that's why in this book, lots of bright colors, lots mm -hmm. of cool images to keep your, your eye satisfied. And also Beast. to make the words more interesting, I made it a rap song. So you have yeah. fun reading along. Yes. Yes, this is the perfect book for anybody. <laughs> it's got a bit for everybody, entertainment, visually and rhythmically. It's such a fun book. Yeah, for those who love to read and even more for those who don't. <laughs> <laughs> Very good tag. <laughs> yeah. So this is my finished graffiti tag, CGE. And as you can see, the steps that we did were the first outline in dark purple, then the two filling colors, pink on top, yellow on the bottom. And then the second dark outline color, which I used black. And then the last step was the green outline, the neon green outline. Mm -hmm. Claire, would you like to share yours as well? Oh gosh, I was just having a go at another word. You know, I was thinking of, you know how you're doing the um, initials? I was thinking, oh, you know, short words like wow, pow, those are fun words to do in a graffiti style. But um, yeah, I don't know if, um, I did mine here, cat. Ooh, uh, I love it. Claire Allison Pernice. <laughs> so yeah, I, was, I just, it's really fun. I would like to have another go at it. And graffiti letters. Yeah, that's, that's really good to do different words. For, you know, if you're doing greeting cards, like getting back to when you were in art school and was it art school or high school that you did the cards that you all sold? It must've been college, I think, right? Oh, that was in college, yes. In during college. my yeah. illustration club president years. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, it's really fun to do greeting cards. And I was just thinking, yeah, I mean, we want to put a message on a greeting card. So to do it in your graffiti style, writing and bubble writing is a really good way to write happy birthday or you know something fun thanks like you might have to write something to say thank you to people you exactly. can just do it with the word so it's really fun to do that yes yeah. certainly and you know it just it adds even more love to any any word you write yes yes <laughs> wonderfully put yeah it adds love and you know you show your interest in what kind of colors you put together because everybody will have done something different so it'd be great to see all your different color choices yes. actually we can take a look at my website and see some of my current work i showed you so much of my my older work ah uh, yes let's move on to what you're working on now yes awesome so my website is I'm gonna share my screen again. My website is cgesperanza.com and you can find me on all different social media platforms as CG Esperanza. I would love a follow. Yes. And I also have a button to order the book on the website. Right. Okay. Then, yes, that's, that's a good tip everybody, you can order it straight through the um, website. Yes. website. This is my little animation for the book right there. <laughs> Can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so this is, so this is the part of the book of Boogie Boogie Y'all that is um, the Boogie Down Block Party and the boogie down block party boogied in the sun, up down all around the block was having fun. Go, go, mango, jetty, yelled the man with icy treats while the break crew boogied to a bambayo beat. And so bambayo is an amazing style of drum that was originated in the islands, uh, now known as Puerto Rico, formerly known as Barinquen. And bambayo was, uh, is in the Bronx and they come to every single Bronx event and they played bambayo drums, the, the bomba drums. And so this was inspired by them. And uh, the guy right there is Dr. Drum. And he is always in all of uh, the block parties in, in the Bronx drumming. And he's a great friend of mine as well. Uh -huh. 
this, this was going to be the original cover of red, yellow, blue, and a dash of white too. But then um, after I did it, mark, the marketing team were like, there is no room on this cover for text. So I had to redo the cover. <laughs> yeah, that's always the key thing, right? Where do we put the text? Yeah. <laughs> I was actually inspired by um, my mentor, uh, the late Jerry Pinkney. Um, oh, yes. And his amazing book, The Lion and the Mouse, oh. had a cover, a beautiful cover of a lion's face and no text. So I was like, mm -hmm. I want to be like Jerry. So yeah. I did my cover with a huge elephant face and no text. But then I was reminded that I was not at Jerry Pinkney's letter, so I level yet. So I need text on my on my <laughs> book. <laughs> it's a gorgeous painting. I love it. Love it. But it's yeah, so Jerry cool. Pinkney, amazing, amazing illustrator. A, a legend. If you have Jerry yeah. Pinkney books, definitely get some. Yes. <laughs> yes. Another another uh, scene from Red, Yellow, Blue. This is. Um, Red and red and yellow made orange like an orange basketball I could slam. Red and blue made purple like a par purple octopus king, I said. And this was a, a fun uh, illustration to illustrate because I had to make it realistic that a big elephant was on this little boat with this uh, little kid. So I had to make the boat look like it was kind of sinking on one side yeah. without tipping over. Yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting thing to do. And um, that castle back there that the Octopus King li lives in is um, based on one of my favorite architectures of all time, the Kremlin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. This is a scene from Soul Food Sunday. And that's the latest book I've, I've released, uh, written by Winston Bingham. And this is a scene that reminded me so much of Thanksgiving with my family, because we would always just sit down and play video games. And then a kid would jump in front of the TV looking for attention because they weren't allowed to play games with the big kids. And then you'd have my cousin Shantae playing in the backyard, playing basketball. So. This is very much based on real life events. Uh -huh. <laughs> very lively, <laughs> a lot going on. There's always lots of things to look at in your artwork. I, I definitely like to uh, add lots of patterns and everything together. <laughs> Everywhere there's something to look at. <laughs> one, of my, one of my older paintings based, so whenever I create a painting, I like to think of three key words. And so to think of an idea of, for the painting. So in this painting, my three key words were surfing, mm -hmm. rock and roll, and alligators. So I took those three key words and thought of a good composition, a good concept for it. And this is the painting that came out. And I was very inspired by listening to the Beach Boys while painting it. This is a painting that I did that was inspired by the artist, the jazz artist, Miles Davis. Mm. And it can be very difficult for a kid to get into jazz because it sounds like a lot of different sounds that you don't usually hear in music and it's all over the place. It's, it's very improvisational, that means they make it up on the spot a lot of the times. So mm -hmm. to a, in, my, in my head, to a little kid, jazz might sound like a jazz monster in the trumpet. So this is my <laughs> jazz monster. <laughs> <laughs> I really love it. Gosh, have you done posters as well? Um, you know, a lot of these would make such amazing posters. I did sell prints for a little while. I, I definitely will get back to that in the new year. Yeah, gorgeous, like Jazz Fest, I was thinking down in New Orleans. Oh yeah, I just <laughs> recently went to New Orleans and I was like, I feel like I, I had the spirit of New Orleans in me the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah. Actually someone um, in the chat, Chris, has just asked a very interesting question. So back a couple of um, slides ago when you were mentioning the Kremlin um, and how that 
was one of your favorite architectures, you know, uh, buildings. In what way um, does architecture influence you, color, design, etc.? She would like oh, to know yeah. what, what oh. you have. Yeah. I feel like the Kremlin looks like it's straight out of a Windsor McKay uh, comic strip. Mm -hmm. So it very much just inspires me to see uh, bright colors, anything that looks like it's just otherworldly. Otherworldly, yes, yes, exactly. Like Arabian Nights, um, yeah. Definitely, anything that's just, you know, surreal. And then combine that with the actual reality. And mm -hmm. I like the... I like the juxtaposition. That's a huge word right there, kids. Juxtaposition, <laughs> yes. one of my favorites though. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. An X in it and a, I think it has a Z as well. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good one to try to graffiti. <laughs> <Ooh. Definitely>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but that's true, Charles. You know, like putting in things that are imaginative, but putting a real person in there, it, it just is, you know, it takes you, it transports you somewhere else in stories and, and in films. You know, that's some of the favorite films of uh, the, the kids watch over and over again, are films that transport you somewhere else that's from the imagination. Yeah. Definitely. And it could make you see your own world in a whole new perspective. Mm -hmm. I hope that when you read Boogie Boogie All, you'll start uh, seeing your neighborhood in a different perspective, yeah. uh, looking at everything around you, not even just the graffiti and street art, but maybe just the trees that you haven't noticed before or the, the pigeons, because there's a lot of pigeons in this yeah. book. I think pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> Old pigeons, yes, there he is. <laughs> yeah, pigeons are very iridescent. Their feathers change color in the light. That's something that I realized when I really looked at pigeons. They're very beautiful creatures. Yeah, but they're, not, they're sometimes overlooked, aren't they? Because they're such a sort of common bird. <laughs> they just seem like a, a bit of a pesky kind of bird. But yes, they've got their own beauty, haven't they? Yeah. And they captured the color beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> this painting is actually another three keywords that I thought of. And the three keywords are aliens, astronauts, and ballet three of my favorite things. Sometimes I'll put all of the keywords that I love into a hat and I'll shake it up and I'll pick out three keywords and I have to make a painting using those words. So that's one of my techniques that I used with this painting. And sometimes when you do a painting, it automatically will give you an idea for a book that you can write. Yes. So that's a very good creative practice if you're thinking about writing a book, but you want a fresh new idea that you haven't thought of before. Very good, very good idea. And you can even kids, if you can't think of the three key words, you could ask um, someone in your family, give me a word and or three different family members could give you three different words and see what they come up with, you know? Definitely. Some of my favorite keywords are robot, tiger, elephant, trumpets, whatever your keyword is. Mm -hmm. in the hat. This is uh, Elabuya, the elephant's cousin, Ella Boogie, and he wears a New York Yankees hat and rides a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, I love elephants too. Mm. Elephants are the best and they're so smart. They're just like pigeons, very intelligent creatures. Mm -hmm. You can see in their eyes, yeah. Yeah. And this was inspired by my cat who always loved to wrestle with my sneakers. <laughs> the laces, the shoelaces, yeah. Cats love laces. <laughs> so I wondered what would happen if uh, the cat actually put my sneakers on while wrestling with the, the laces. <laughs> yeah. Very mischievous, that cat. <laughs> and also one of my favorite uh, characters is Puss in Boots. So mm -hmm. I thought, what if the boots were sneakers? So ah, that's yes, there's a story, a modernized version, fractured fairy tale. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of my favorite gymnasts, uh, John Orozco, straight mm -hmm. from the Bronx. He was um, uh, in the 2012 Olympics, and he's straight from my neighborhood, which I was very proud of. And mm -hmm. this is um, a painting based on Malcolm X and... Uh, 
and Martin Luther King. And they were actually the inspiration for the X-Men. If you listen to some interviews with Stan Lee. So I said, what if, how would they look if they were actual superheroes? So that was my take on it. This Has that been published somewhere, Charles, that, that illustration? Uh, it's, it, it actually has not been published. This is all in my personal. It's your personal. Wow, excellent. I, so I, I definitely will be making a print in the new year, though. <laughs> yeah, good, good. The Bronx Independent Bookstore Day uh, 2020, I did the poster for it. And this is how I hope you all will react to seeing the Bronx in my books. <laughs> yeah. Pop out and a pigeon will fly out of the book as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, a pop up book. Yeah. Pop up book is one of my dreams. One day I'll I'll get to that point, but they're very complicated. They are complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, this one I switched my style up a lot, and mm -hmm. I wanted to make a more angular, uh, flat style. So this one is titled Jump. And look, kids, no use of the color black. No, uh, it's all colorful. You know what I mean? You don't do any outlines in, in a black pen, which a lot of cartoonists uh, do um, use black as an outline, but you have not. Sometimes uh, it's, it's fun to just have no outline and just let uh, the white background and your colors make everything pop instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely play around with it. And I know everyone here in the summertime loves the Piragua man or the icy man or the icy person coming around and giving ices in New York City, especially. You, they, they make such amazing flavors. So I had to make an art uh, paying homage to the amazing Piragua man. Um, do you remember a particular flavor that stands out? My favorite piragua would have to be coconut cream. Mm -hmm. Coconut yeah. cream. Yeah. How about yours? Um, well, I'd like a tangy sort of flavor. So I'm usually going for something lemony. Um, but uh, I also like praline, which is sort of uh, like a nutty, chocolatey sort of flavor. Yes, definitely. Love praying. It depends on my mood, right? Those could be completely different flavors. But if I want something refreshing, it's sort of sharp. If I want something decadent, it's sort of creamy. But I love coconut as well. Definitely. Coconut and pineapple together are a great combo. Mm. Yeah. The good thing about the, the Piragua Man, uh, he'll let you mix all the flavors together. So it's really ah, yeah. <laughs> and this is the self-portrait that you all saw in my presentation done in all oil paints. Yes, gosh. It's so much more than just a self-portrait. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a piece that I made for uh, a transitional home for women and children that I uh, teach art at, and it's called Concourse House. And they had an amazing fundraiser this past fall. They created crocheted, uh, uh, wow. blossom flowers beautiful yeah I love that I love the, the angle that you've chosen to paint that whole scene oh thank you yeah I, I love to uh think of everything as a movie scene because I really yeah. love to be a movie director at some point so I, I always think of what's a good angle I can shoot this at <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's excellent um angle beautiful a, a good well, way to learn kids perspective Perspective means which way you're looking at an object. Are you looking at it from an ant, a bug's eye view? A bug would see it from the ground up. Or are you looking at it from a bird's eye view? How would a bird see this scene? Because birds are always high up. So perspective is whether you're a bug or you're looking at it like a bird. <laughs> yes, very well, very well introduced that perspective, yeah. Yeah, uh, we have uh, Chris saying, oh, this is so creative, Charles. Thank you. And you're introducing a whole new world to everybody, which is so true. I, I agree with you, Chris. That was a wonderful that comment. Is, that is definitely one of the most important things that you can, uh, that I can do is share a new world and help you see things in a different way. So thank you so much for that. And, and you do it in so many ways, uh, Charles, because it's not just 
um, you know, perspective for sure. I'm seeing that in a lots of your imagery, but also color. You have such an, I mean, it just makes me want to stop painting because you've got such a great eye for color. Don't, I, I think that really brings everything to life. And I, you know, you're bringing worlds to us, um, whether it's, you know, your viewpoint of the Bronx or you're creating a scene out of your imagination on the water with the boat. I mean, it's just, it's magical. Ah, I'm so flattered. And, you know, I, this is a newer piece that I just actually created maybe two, three, two, three months ago. So it's different colors than, that I've really never used before. Like in mostly none of my books, you will find this saturated pink and the kid's hair are different colors, which is a new thing that I started doing now. So mm -hmm. definitely I'm evolving you know, with every painting and every book that I do. <laughs> yeah, what keeps it really vibrant, yeah. And so this is a piece that I did uh, for another, the year before um, we had a fundraiser at Concourse House and this was a digital one and this was in the midst of uh, the pandemic. So we wanted to just show Bronx kids still having fun, being socially distanced, and you know wearing masks but still you know enjoying time together so we had this uh painting with my first painting um of kids wearing masks which was very interesting i because i had to show expression without actually showing you know the full face which is face, yeah. definitely a very different uh way of painting yes yeah Another an, another uh, experiment that I did with uh, painting more flat colors and not rendering the clothes so much, but still rendering the face and uh, the flesh tones. The cover of Soul Food Sunday. Mm -hmm. Again, and you can see it without the text here. Mm -hmm. I think whenever you see something without the text, it definitely feels like a totally different piece yes that's why it's so wonderful to see the original art show if you ever get a chance to in the city um because you see the art without the text and that it does it gives you a whole different perspective of the of the work that's gone into something that's printed into a book you know you get to see the texture uh, you get get up close it's yeah very exciting so did you have your family members pose did you take photographs or did they have to model a little bit for you? I mean, did your mom have to hold that platter up? <laughs> so I, I, I worked with Eric Velasquez in his studio after college and Eric Velasquez is very inspired by Norman Rockwell. And Norman yes. Rockwell used photos for everything because you can't, uh, capturing authentic human, human expression is just such a magical thing. And what better way to do that than from a photograph? So. Mm -hmm. I learned from Norman Rockwell and Eric Velasquez. So I bring my camera. I, I bought a really nice expensive camera and I brought and I bring it to my family's how, homes and I take pictures all the time. I have them pose for me. And my mom was very gracious. She she doesn't like the spotlight a lot, but she for this book, she uh, was very happy to pose for these paintings. So I'm oh, very grateful for that. That's <laughs> such a great homage for her as well I mean and all you know all your family and friends your neighborhood it's great I mean you've really captured it and that that's why you've captured it because it's real people <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I yeah. think the more real you make your art the better so yes. if you make yes. it real to your perspective and your reality no one else can have anything like that because your yeah. perspective is very unique you're a very, very unique yeah. person Yes. And nowadays, everyone, you know, you could use a phone if uh, you wanted to capture some photographs. You don't um, necessarily have to wait till you can afford a, a really good camera. You can capture your images on a phone if you can, if you have your own phone, if you're older, if you're, you know, someone in the family could um, help you take some pictures if you've got some ideas. So yeah. that, you know, that it's more accessible. I was, I was thinking, Charles, you know, that people can Camera phones are so advanced right now. Like you couldn't even tell if you, they were using a Nikon or an iPhone 10. So yes, yes, exactly, exactly. 
But yes, don't be afraid of using reference. I know when you're first starting off doing a lot of drawing, you think that you should really not be copying things, but actually that's how you see things. So if you're copying a photograph, it's, it's a way for you to just get the uh, positioning of the figures or you know, you're trying to get the gestures and figuring out the shadows if you're using shadows or if you're doing even a cartoon, you can use reference. It's, it's a way all illustrators really work. And to, to your point, Charles, you know, very famous um, illustrators have used this technique, Norman Rockwell, Eric Velasquez. Yes, he actually did a Saturday Stories, Charles, at the museum. He was one of our um, first in the, uh, in the beginning in 2018, I think. So oh. he, he's a wonderful illustrator and he showed kids how to do portraits. He actually drew a portrait of one of the students um, live. Yeah, he's amazing. What a great teacher you had. <laughs> Definitely. I, we, I call him my art dad, so. You're um, that, yeah. Amazing art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I, I love that you brought that up. Don't be afraid to use reference. I think the magic really happens when you use reality, reference, and then bring your imagination into that. So don't just live by the reference, bring your own imagination and creativity into the reference after, yeah. you know, and combine yeah. it. That's when I think the best stuff usually yeah. happens. Yes. Definitely. And a lot of, a lot of uh, what you see here, I used a lot of reference, but then I just threw in my own different colors, the way that I, composed, I put all of the shapes together. That was all right out of my own head. <laughs> and yeah, these are more uh, paintings from the book, Boogie Boogie Y'all. And um, if, you've, if you've never used a spray can before, there are, I, uh, there are very safe spray cans that you can use, acrylic-based spray cans. If you have a nice canvas one day, your parents can set up a nice canvas and you can practice using a spray can. And it's a really fun, uh, really fun thing to do. You can even use it for other things like painting furniture as well. If you uh, have some furniture you need to paint, it's a lot of fun things you can do with uh, spray paint. <laughs> Probably outside. <laughs> yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> I would suggest acrylic spray paint because it doesn't smell as much. It doesn't have the fumes and it's very safe to use for kids. <laughs> Yes. Um, I think Chris just mentioned something. Oh, she says that um, I should love to see you collaborate with children's author Jason Reynolds. You both talk so passionately about adding imagination. Thank you for that question, Chris. Hopefully Jason Reynolds is watching right now. <laughs> Definitely, uh, let's, let's work together. <laughs> yes, there you go. We advocate it. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. And now if you, there are any other questions, I'd love to answer. I was going to um, ask you, Charles, you were um, mentioning that you do sneaker sort of drawings. Do you have any sneaker drawings that maybe you could even draw one digitally for us so the kids could see, you know, that's a really fun thing is to design your own sneakers. So maybe... Oh, sure. So actually, yeah, we can uh, take a look at some sneaker designs that I've been working on. And when I make a sneaker design, something that I like to do is I like to make a mood board of all of my favorite sneakers. So I, I take a board and I pin up all of the sneakers that I love. And then after that, I take bits and pieces from every single one of them and I create a sneaker. The that... ultimate sneaker. Was that? The ultimate sneaker, because you've ultimate combined sneaker. everything. Definitely. Yeah. And you don't want to take too much from one design because then the designer might be like, hey, you stole my sneaker design. So <laughs> definitely take yeah. from all the different sneakers you can. And so I'm going to show you all one design that I've created. Can we all see my screen again? Yes. Wow. 
also. So yeah, this is the uh, one of the sneakers that I created for my new book. And I love that it's a basketball sneaker. Basketball sneakers are my favorite kind of sneaker because mm-hmm. uh, they kind of look like boots a little bit, but much cooler, much more uh, fun Yeah, boots. And I actually added added uh, some a couple different styles of that same sneaker. So I just showed you the purple version of it. Mm-hmm. This version has more yellow and orange and blues. So I actually would love, and this is another version of the sneaker with orange instead of yellow. You can see the difference. Yeah, so kids, if you're not doing something digitally, um, obviously Charles did this digitally so he could just change the colors um, very easily. You could do your um, drawn outline and then maybe you could get a photocopy or two done of it and you could change the colors that way, right? Definitely. And also if you have a tablet, which most most of you probably have a tablet or even a phone, um, you can download Procreate, which is a great app that you can uh, digitally paint and color Mm -hmm. with. And that one is way easier to use than uh, Photoshop as well. So Procreate is a great- Procreate, yeah, very good, very good point, yeah. And this is a more desaturated version. Yeah, it changes it completely. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny how just uh, changing one little color or the saturation of the color just changes the entire sneaker, which is yeah. something that I really have fun doing. So actually, I'm going to ask the audience, which version do you prefer? One, two, three, or four? So I want y'all to think about it for a second. Yeah, run through it one more time. I have to think about it too. Let's see. Mm. Have the first colorway. This is one. Mm-hmm. Kind of looks like flames and and a forest and a river. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you feel that splashes of water. Two, the more uh, pastel, desaturated. Mm-hmm unsaturated color version of one. So that's two. Yeah, put in the chat your your choice, please. (laughs) And then we have three, which is orange instead of yellow. Mm -hmm. And then we have four which okay. is purple. I'm gonna get this started. <laughs> oh, vote now. I'm Your voting. <laughs> of, the ne- of the sneaker in Charles's next book. Whoops. And you okay. all, if you help, for helping me decide, you all get a creator's credit. <laughs> hey, we've got them coming in now. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'm gonna run through them once again for our undecided voters. One, two, three, or four. Well, the interesting thing is we're guessing across the board, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people like a, a different one. So that's the beauty of it, isn't it? You'd be able to sell the whole range, Charles. Everybody likes all of them. We've got more votes right now for number one. Oh, number one. We got two votes for number one. Ooh, it's actually now jointly with number four. <laughs> number one and number four, neck and neck. Yes, yes right. neck and neck. And quite different, the two of them. So yeah, got, they're very, yeah. very different. I think number one and number four are the most different. So yes, so they're yeah they they've got equal votes. Very awesome, very awesome. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, now you can be inspired to 
create sneakers, guys. <laughs> if we don't have a tiebreaker, maybe I'll have to put them both in the book. Ah, uh, yes. At the moment, it was equal between one and four. Oh, so. somebody's just changing from four. Hang on. Can I change to four? I was two. Oh, so four is now the winner. <laughs> Congratulations yes. to those who chose four. I think that this uh, four is going to be the design. Yes, so number four. <laughs> it is very, very cool. Awesome. Thank you all so much for, for voting because as, a, as, a, as an illustrator, sometimes you work in your studio all by yourself and you're going on your own ideas. And sometimes the only critique you get is from your art directors and your editors, but sometimes they're very busy, so you can't get you can't get feedback from them all the time. So it's great to have amazing art critics like you all to uh, yes give. to collaborate a bit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, yeah. hear any other questions? I know we're, we're wrapping up soon. It was yes, awesome yes soon. So yeah, if you've got any more questions, I'd love to know um, them right now. So you could pop that in. Are you all busily drawing? Are you, are we want to see what artwork you've been creating, what um, graffiti um, lettering you've done. We'd love to see that. So please do send in your artwork. Um, thank you so, so much, Charles, for joining us this morning. It has been a pleasure. It was amazing. And, a, and a, long, a long dream of mine to be in the Society of Illustrators and to do a live event like my, my art dad, Eric Velasquez. So yes, yes. Today. <laughs> and this is just the beginning of them. I mean, you've done a virtual one live now. We'd love to have you actually live in the museum in oh, the yes. future, you know, with one of your new books. Um, so bear that in mind, we'll be in touch. And the next book, we'll be designing sneakers or painting sneakers. Oh, something. that's right. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Exciting. Well, I want to wish everybody and you too, Charles and all your family, a very happy holidays. Yes. Um, you know, this is, one. yeah. This has been um, a great way to end our uh, Saturday Stories for 2021, to have you here. You're in the show, the original art show, well-deserved. Amazing to see Charles's original art. So if you can get over to the museum, if you're in the area, um, just know that the show is up until the 29th of December. So you still have a bit of time and it's so worth seeing it. Um, it's an awesome show and congratulations find the book. You'll love this book. I have to say that this book has to be on your bookshelf at home. It's got so much entertainment in it. Oh my gosh, you just, uh, it's a feast of illustration. And the, audiobook, <laughs> the audiobook is also available on Audible or anywhere you uh, oh, yeah. listen to audiobooks. And I think it's really awesome to listen to the audiobook and then read the book so you know how I do it. But if you feel like switching it up, I would love to hear that. Send that to me. I would love to hear it. <laughs> oh, but yes, it's all, yes, we like to collaborate. So we like to hear what people think. So do be in touch with Charles. You can totally get in touch with him on Instagram or through his website, contact him that way. Give him your ideas and your thoughts. If you want to record yourself doing your own rap version, oh yeah, he'd like to hear how you did it. You might yeah. want to play a drum. You might want to create a drum out of something in your house to make that bongo sound. I love the, uh, the Bombayo, right? The Bombayo? The Bombayo, awesome. Bombayo, sorry, my British accent. <laughs> Bombayo, yes, it's much more lyrical. <laughs> and you can uh, send a message to me on Instagram or Twitter. I love to read messages from readers, so feel free. <laughs> Yay, well, thank you so much, Charles. I'm sure everyone's gonna be continuing drawing all weekend long. And don't forget, we'll be having the video up shortly on the YouTube channel, so you can go and watch it again and share it with your other friends. Take care, everybody, and see you in 2022. 2022, Happy New Year, y'all. Happy New Year, yeah. Take care, bye. Bye.